Hello again, Chris Lee and Chase Robinson here to preview Vanderbilt's road trip to LSU in a matchup of bowl eligible six and four teams. You can catch this one 645 Central on the SEC network. Bet online has LSU by eight with an over under of 54 and a half, making for an implied final score of LSU 31, Vanderbilt 23. My computer composite model favors LSU by 11 and a half. Chase, this line has come down considerably. I think it started at, at 11 ish or so where the computers had it. I think it got all the way under eight to seven and a half at, at one point. The, the line is, I stated it here, I think was is, is of earlier this morning, Tuesday morning, but a fascinating matchup. Vanderbilt got a lot to play for. And my question is, how much does LSU have to play for? after a really strange loss at Florida last week. Yeah, I mean, LSU coming off back-to-back -back losses now with the uh, the big loss to Alabama, then losing to Florida. You, you got to wonder where LSU is at right now mentally and and uh, and, and what they're going to look like uh, in this game where Vanderbilt's trying to finish out their season as strong as possible and they're bowl eligible and they've got some great wins on the year. And so... Um, yeah, to me, this is a really intriguing game just because where the two teams are at at this point. All right, let's get into the matchup starting when Vanderbilt's got the ball. The Commodores averaged 28 points flat a game on 62 snaps. Turnover rate just 1%. They run it 59% of the time for an average of 4.2 yards per rushing play. Sacks count as passing plays where Vanderbilt averages 7 yards per passing play. Commodores get sacked just 5.1% of the time. LSU's defense gives up 25.1 points a game, just 58 snaps, 2.1% turnover rate, 6.2 yards per rushing play against LSU's defense, 6.4 per pass, 9% sack rate. Vanderbilt's offense chase has struggled lately as Diego Pavia has just gotten worn down. They're Vanderbilt not – too explosive from the running back position. LSU's defense has been solid much of the year, uh, was on the field for, what, 42 minutes last week, just proved to be too much to ask. Um, actually, I guess was only on the field 18 minutes last week and, and, and still wasn't good enough to win. I got my numbers yeah. reversed there. My apologies. Anyway, point is, just, just a weird season for LSU defensively, and I think Vanderbilt with a week off to, to get ready for this one and get Pavi a little more fresh could be something to watch here. Yeah, I think that off week for for Vanderbilt was huge. It came at a great time for them. I feel like to to kind of reset, to to get healthy, to to rest up. I mean, Pavi has played a lot of football this year. He's taken a lot of hits. I mean, at this point, everybody's a little banged up, and and so I, I thought that uh, yeah, the the bye week came at a good time for them, and I think that will help going into a game like this uh, for for uh, Vanderbilt to have him a little more fresh. And uh, he's a, he's he's their offense. He's a huge part of, of what they do and, and getting this team going. And so I think coming off the bye week, they'll be ready for this game. All right, let's flip side to the matchup before we do. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for online betting. From the earliest odds to in-game live betting, Bet Online provides you with all the action and the ability to watch the games as they happen with the largest selection of odds on everything from football, NBA, and college basketball, NHL to UFC and MMA. Head to Bet Online today to get in on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet Online, the game starts here. LSU's offense versus Vanderbilt's defense. Let's get into the LSU side first. The Tigers averaged 29.1 points and 71 snaps a game, a turnover rate of 2% flat. LSU will throw it 62% of the time, 6.9 yards per passing play, 4.6 per rushing play. Vanderbilt giving up just 21.7 points a game on 61 snaps, a 2% turnover rate. Teams throw it 52% of the time against the Commodores. They average 6.8 yards per Passing play, 4.7 per rushing play. Vanderbilt generates a 7% sack rate. Uh, LSU's offensive line was, was hardly giving up any sacks. Gave up seven last week to Florida, which is more than it, I think, gave up the entire season before that. 
just a, a weird matchup here. You, you saw Garrett Nussmeyer sit, I guess, the final series or, or two of that one um, as A.J. Swan finished up. I don't know what to make of LSU's offense right now. I don't either. It's uh, it's a mess. And you, you saw Brian Kelly just so upset with a uh, receiver on – on uh, Saturday night, and um, yeah, there there's some issues there. And and Nussmeyer had such a great start to the season, but he's been turning the ball over a lot, and and really just not able to. He, he just doesn't look comfortable out there right now, and and uh, that's been you know in 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 how the game has gone for for LSU. And so there are some some issues offensively. They need to get more guys involved. Uh, yeah, there's just. It, it's almost head scratching of what we saw the first half of the season to what we're seeing now for LSU. It looks totally different in the in the way the offense is playing and and uh, you know I, I think Vanderbilt defensively has has done good this season of containing teams of slowing teams down and and causing issues that that uh, maybe other teams haven't uh, presented uh, and so I think that definitely could be the case this week to. Um, to where Vanderbilt does some different things to to get LSU uh, off balance, really like they have been the last couple of weeks. Yeah, Chase, good point there with Vanderbilt's defense. It's kind of carried the team lately four really good outings in a row before just kind of collapsed under the weight of, I think, not being fresh against South Carolina, to be honest. LSU offensively, ton of talent. Love Garrett Nussmeyer. Love their receiving core of Anderson and Lacey. Love their tight end, Mason Taylor. Caden Durham's done good things in the running game at times. But just, boy, the, the, the optics at, at times last week just weren't good for reasons you mentioned. And with that, let's let's get right into the picks. Tell me who you're taking and why. I just, I've lost a lot of faith in LSU, um, especially offensively, um, in the way they've performed the last couple of weeks. Um, it's just, you can tell there's a lot of frustration, whether it's players or coaches on the team. I'm going to take Vanderbilt in this game. I, I think they go down to Baton Rouge. I think they, I think they pull the upset and win. I just, I'm, I'm not impressed with what I'm seeing from LSU. Something's got to change. And, uh, based on what I'm seeing from, from players and coaches in the last couple of games, I just, I, I, I think they've lost an edge. I'm going to take Vanderbilt. Look, if, if you're just picking rosters for talent, there is no doubt you take LSU's before Vanderbilt. I think Vanderbilt probably, if you're just ranking talented rosters, probably 15 to 16 in the league. That had mattered, though, Chase. This is the team with Diego Pavia. It's the closest thing that you'll see to a triple option. Vanderbilt had a week off. Last time Vanderbilt had a bye week, you remember what happened. Vanderbilt beat yeah. Alabama. Now, that was in Nashville. This is in Baton Rouge, but I just wonder – how excited are the folks in Baton Rouge going to be? They're used to this time of the season, you know, either playing for a national title or, or playing to fire a coach. And they're kind of in this in between. I don't think Brian Kelly's getting fired anytime soon. For, for, and I don't think he should, among other reasons. They owe him a lot of money. And plus the fact that he wins consistently, even if it's not happening this year. This to me, mid November is about motivation. LSU felt like it lost its motivation with that Alabama blowout a couple of weeks ago. Felt like it took that into the Florida game. You got Brian Kelly yelling at players. Now you got a team that comes off a week off uh, compared to a team that that left Gainesville in disarray. I have to think the line has fallen for a reason. Give me Vanderbilt as well. I think the Commodores go in and get a seventh win, which would be huge. That'd be the first winning season. For them if they get it i think since james franklin was in nashville we'll be here to talk about it we usually start our live streams at 9 30 central afterwards that means this one will still be going it'll be coming down the stretch as we do our broadcast to make sure you get that hit the subscribe button that's free enable your notifications that'll let you know when we go live or when we come up with one of our many non-live videos and we cover football, baseball, and basketball here year-round. For Chase Robinson, I'm Chris Lee. You have been watching Southeastern 16, presented by Bet Online.